Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members and Colleagues, <clears throat> it's a bittersweet for me to stand here today as I make my final contribution on the floor of this House. This is the beginning of my fourth consecutive term. I have been elected four times on four different political parties and in four different elections. Honorable Speaker, I must thank the hardworking and the patriotic people of the then Dujis constituency for opening the doors of leadership for me and for keeping the faith when Garissa Township constituency was carved out of Dujis. Honorable Speaker, I worked hard to never let them down. And in those 15 years, they have given me their unwavering support in both good and bad times. They prayed for me in celebration and in mourning. And we have seen joy and tragedy. We have laughed together and we cried together. I am forever indebted to them, Mr. Speaker. The Speaker, even as I change leadership positions from one arm of government to another, from the legislature to the executive, I know I can count on their support, prayers, and goodwill. Because as they say, and I quote, home is the starting place of love, hope, and dreams. Honorable Speaker, talking about dreams, this is a sorrow moment for me to be here abiding, bidding farewell to my fellow parliamentarians. Unlike last time, when it was a switch from the front bench to the bank bench, today is a different. I will be walking out to actually go and implement the laws, the policies, the budgets, and the resolution of this House. I have been a legislative insider long enough, Mr. Speaker. I hope that as I cross over to the executive, I'll keep the faith and do the job with the dedication, diligence, and discipline. Honorable Speaker, let me share a brief story with my colleagues. The first time I came to Nairobi, I got a lift because I could not even afford the bus fare. I was young with big dreams for serving in government and in cabinet one day. That journey from the first day to Nairobi to this day, when my dream is on the cusp of being actualized, took too long. Sometimes it looked like it was never going to happen. After the 20, after 2007 elections, I hoped for a ministerial appointment. Instead, I got an assistant minister position. I worked hard at, at it. I excelled at it as some of the few ranking members led by you, who was a Minister for Foreign Affairs, and Honorable John Bundy, who served in the 10th Parliament, can bear witness. That position bore fruit. In 2013, I moved a step closer to actualizing my dream when I was appointed the first leader of majority in the Kenya National Assembly under the 2010 Constitution. The Speaker, I served with dedication, ensuring the supremacy of the Constitution was upheld I delicately balanced the wishes of the majority party, the needs of my constituency, the national interest, the public interest, and the parliamentary independence. Sometimes it worked, at times it did not. But overall, together with the colleagues inside this house and those in the executive, we made progress. We transformed our country. In 2017, Mr. Speaker, I was reappointed to the position of leader of majority to complete the journey. We walked that path in tough years of the pandemic, of the COVID-19 pandemic, the harrowing years of the handshake, and the crazy season of the BBI euphoria. I withered the storm until June 2020, when I stood here and told you, I mean, told your predecessor and the colleagues who were there, that the season has come to an abrupt end. It was one of my many lessons in politics that sometimes you may do things, you may, you may do everything right, deliver on your promises, execute all the assignments, and do all the right things, you will perform. You will get excellent results. However, you must have, you must have the spine to stand by your friends. I'm a living testimony, Mr. Speaker, that you don't have to betray your friends to thrive in politics. Ignore that nonsense. 
I stood by William Ruto, now His Excellency President William Ruto and Commander-in-Chief of the, of, the, of the Kenyan Defense Forces. He stood by me. The currency of political hygiene, Mr. Speaker, is loyalty. Being principled. Can your friend rely on you when it really matters? Can you rely on your friend when it really matters? Can anyone depend on you? As many of my colleagues in here will tell you, we walked on fire, but we stood firm. We stood with the truth. We did the right thing. We did not abandon our friends. Eventually, the good guys won. I trust that we now have the opportunity to right the wrongs. Now in 2022, Mr. Speaker, I am here bidding farewell to the House to go and serve in the Cabinet. That is the power of dreams. It's a miracle. But the lesson for me, Mr. Speaker, is the same philosophy that we in the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition, the Hasra Nation, have been preaching. If you believe in it, if you put your mind to it, if you work hard at it, God will make it happen for you. It doesn't matter how long it takes. He will guide your steps. He will give you the push. He will support your dreams. Every hustler must rise. Everything is possible if you keep trusting. Honorable Speaker, I served under three speakers. First was under Speaker Marende for one term. Two terms under your classmate and campus roommate, Justin Bedan Njoka Muturi, and just under 41 days of your leadership. You have so far guided this house fairly, firmly, and with a keen political acumen. Given your years in politics, I am not surprised, Mr. Speaker. I trust your leadership will help transform this house, this parliament, and this country. I also served under five clerks. I begin with the late Samuel Dindiri, then worked with Patrick Gishohi. Thereafter, I worked more closely with the late Justin Bundi and his successor, Michael Sialai. In the current parliament, I have worked with the acting clerk, Sahara Kyoko. All these professional gentlemen and one lady have made my stay in the National Assembly memorable. Mr. Speaker, the second tip I have for my colleagues is about the staff of parliament. We have 1,000 qualified, intelligent staff with the degrees, masters and PhD in this house. They are civil servants. They know a lot of things. They can make your career shine, but you have to go to the offices. They will not come to you. You have to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to ask. There is no stupid question that they have not had. There is no impossible request they have not received, Mr. Speaker. They have seen it all. Speak to them. You will be surprised at the depth of knowledge that they possess. They will guide you in your roles in legislation, in representation, and even in oversight. Don't think you are too important to speak to a parliamentary staff. They have seen politicians come and go. They will be here when you leave. I found some of them here, and I'm leaving them here. But I am going away with tons of knowledge. Please use them to help transform this country. Honorable Speaker, my third tip to my colleagues as, as, is that I have is that when it comes to legis legislature, we sing and swim as one. We are here to work for the people of Kenya. We make laws to serve the nation. It doesn't matter which side of the political divide you are from. Always strive to do the right thing. There is no use trying to embarrass your colleagues or act thoughtlessly. If you do so, you just lower the dignity of the whole house. Think about the honor as you go about your business. In any case, do not forget that when protesters, like in the 11th Parliament, my late friend Jacob Bidio and myself, protesters bring pigs and all manner of livestock to the parliamentary gates. They will equally offend all of us. Just do the right thing for the people and for the country and for the legislature 
and for yourself. As long as you keep your conscience clear, you will succeed. Make sure you can sleep at night after all the politics is done. And trust me, this is a house of politics. It can get nasty. Mr. Speaker, one more thing. All this I must say boldly. You must find a way to protect the constituency development fund. I am not saying this for sentimental reasons or for your own, or for your egos. I have seen CDF change lives in all constituencies in this country. It has built schools, hospitals, roads, police stations, provided water, toilets, and bursaries to our school-going children, even food. We know how transformative it is. It is unique to us as the only legislature in the whole of the Commonwealth to have it in place. We know the courts have made their findings. We know that the beauty of our constitutional democracy is about constant negotiation to find solutions within our context. We know there are theories. We also know what works. CDF has proven over and over again to be a solution. Let's do all we can to find a way to keep CDF model alive. In this way, we'll do a lot of justice to our people. As we speak about our constitutional architecture, Honorable Speaker, I also have to beseech my colleagues in the legislature to help guarantee the independence of the judiciary. Do everything you can to make sure the judiciary has the operational and financial autonomy. We have seen what has captured justice system, justice system can do. Let us restore faith in the judiciary. You have seen what His Excellency President William Ruto has, has done to that end. Let's support him. On a related note, let's also keep our independent institutions independent. Don't make laws that will hobble these institutions. I naively did that at some point, but I have since learned how costly it is to the people of this country and even to parliament. And I trust, Mr. Speaker, that in this term, you will revisit those laws and remake them in the spirit of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, as I come towards the end of this farewell note, let me also tell my colleagues, when you got elected, you made a pact with your people. You had an agenda for your constituency, a deal with your community. And after election, I'm sure many of you have realized that your party also has an agenda. There is also the media with its own agenda. If you are not careful, you may end up abandoning your people. Keep your focus. Serve your people. They are all that you have. Don't let the lights and the shillings of the city fool you. At the end of the day, you must have dignity and honor to face your people and seek re-election. Don't abandon your people. Don't switch off your phones. Don't disappear from the constituency you are elected to help solve problems. Please do your job. As I go to the executive, Mr. Speaker, arm of government, I promise to work with the members here. If any one of you wants my help, please do not hesitate to visit my office. I will make time for you. You will not wait unless, of course, if you become too frequent and make it difficult for me to do my job. But seriously, Mr. Speaker, please let us coordinate because we are serving the same people, the same country for our future and the well-being of, of, of our generation. I also look forward to actualizing the provision of Article 125 and 153 of the Constitution to come to this House and respond to your questions directly. I will also honor all requests to appear before the House Committee. As I conclude, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask my colleagues and all Kenyans watching, for one thing, their forgiveness. I have been in this Parliament for years, and I may have said words or done things that may have annoyed you, wronged you, or offended someone. I may never know what some of those were, but every time it was brought to my attention, I had acted in an offensive manner. I reached out to the aggrieved parties, and we buried the hatchet. I ask that as I go to the executive, you also grant me that honor. Sometimes, due to the nature of our politics, 
or firmness required to execute the assignments. I may have upset or offended you. I apologize unconditionally to anyone in this house and outside this house who I may have wronged. For Honorable Kimani Ichungwa, the leader of the majority party, it is my pleasure to congratulate you. I may have served the longest so far in this office, in, in, in that office, but you are now the man in the chair. You are hard work, working, disciplined, and very intelligent man you are. I have no doubt that you will excel. The sky is the limit for you, Honorable Ichungwa. I once again ask for your kind support and support of my colleagues, Honorable Members and Honorable Speaker, as I join the executive. Honorable Speaker, let me also congratulate my former immediate chairman of the Public Accounts Committee and uh, my former minority leader, Honorable John Bardi and Honorable Opio Wandai, who is the current minority leader. Two fine gentlemen, intelligent, hardworking, people of consensus, who every time we had an issue in the House or in a committee, in Public Accounts Committee, we could bring our heads together. I want to thank Honorable John Bandy, Honorable Opio Wandai, and my other colleagues who are not with us, the late Honorable uh, Jacoyo Midio and the late Honorable uh, Member for Kitui West, uh, the Honorable Nyenze. Honorable Speaker, I look forward to a harmonious working relationship between the legislature and the executive. The country needs us to step up. We must do it in the service of the nation. I trust that the people of Garissa Township will send to this house a hard-working and a patriotic lawmaker as my replacement. Please, Mr. Speaker and colleagues, grant him or her the need to continue serving the people. I, I must now sit down. And Mr. Speaker, in accordance with the Constitution, this afternoon, I'll hand over my resignation letter so that you can send the writs to IEBC so that they give the people of Garissa an opportunity to elect a new member of parliament. And as, as I sit down, I will not say goodbye to members. I will say see you soon, because I expect to be back as a cabinet secretary to respond to your questions. And as we transform this country from bottom up, I trust that you will approve, and you have done so far, approved my uh, cabinet position. I want to thank all the members, the 349 members, the staff, the committee of appointment, and the media, and all the people who gave me that opportunity. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you for the time you have accorded me. Thank you, sir. Thank you.